Welcome back to the lecture series on the methodology and perspectives of humanities paper. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the topic philology. Philology can be defined as the scientific and systematic study of language. The terms philology and linguistics are often synonymously used, but you can say that philology is the older term. During the 19th century, language was studied in a diachronic manner. Now, diachronic linguistics is also known as historical linguistics because it focuses on a historical overview. You are trying to look at language and its evolution through history over a period of time. But uh, with the onset of the 20th century, the focus shifted. The emphasis shifted to a synchronic approach. And this basically looks at the various components of language at a particular point of time, at a given point of time. Now, this is going to be an ultra short introduction to modern linguists and their main ideas. Ferdinand de Saussure, Edward Sapper, Leonard Bloomfield and Noam Chomsky are considered to be the leading linguists in the modern era. Sassur introduced the terms Lang and Parole. Lang stands for the totality of language shared by the collective consciousness. So you're basically looking at the elements of a language and the rules for their combination. For example, grammar or, or syntax. And Parole, on the other hand, basically looks at how the individual or how a single person uses the resources of language. And Chomsky introduced two similar terms, competence and performance. Competence uh, refers to the internalized set of rules that determine the individual's awareness and use of language. And performance is almost same as paro. Okay? It denotes the individual's use of a language or the individual's speech utterance. These are the different kinds of philology. Comparative philology, textual philology, new philology, cognitive philology and decipherment. Comparative philology studies the relationship between various languages. In the 16th century, several philologists started looking at the similarities that existed between Sanskrit and European languages. And they studied it in detail and eventually they came to the conclusion that there was a common ancestor language called Proto-Indo-European from which the modern languages descended. That is why they could observe the similarities. And uh, comparative philology also studies exotic languages so that uh, older texts in, written in such languages can be understood better. Textual philology looks at the study of texts and their history. So this branch of philology focuses on textual criticism and tries to recreate the original text based on diverse copies or variants of manuscripts. And it is believed to have originated in ancient Greece. For example, many scholars attempted to reconstruct the original version of the Bible from the various available manuscripts. Now, textual philology later gave rise to what is known as the critical editions, which uh, provide a reconstructed text accompanied by footnotes that indicate the various manuscript variants that are available. New philology stands in contrast to textual philology in the sense that new philologists study the text as it is. They are not concerned about the various changes and these philologists, they do not believe in editing or reconstructing the original material that is available. Cognitive philology 
deals with written and oral texts and looks at such texts as the result of human mental processes. It compares documentary evidence from textual studies with that of data obtained from experimental research. Jesse Furman, as the name suggests, is a branch of philology that focuses uh, on the decipherment of the language that is being studied. Uh, for example, Egyptian, Assyrian, Hittite, Sumerian, Ugaritic languages are studied with the aim of deciphering that particular language. And you have several notable examples, uh, the decipherment of the Rosetta Stone in 1822, and the decipherment of linear B in script in 1952. Let's conclude by looking at how philology comes into play in literary criticism. In literary criticism, philology stands for approaches that uh, focus on editorial issues and the reconstruction of texts. Now, the invention of the printing press that happened back in the Renaissance era greatly strengthened the field. A great positivist spirit is also witnessed in the 19th century where philologists try to formulate concordances. So uh, you, these positivist approaches have developed considerably in the modern times due to developments in, in technology. So quantitative and statistical investigations are made possible because of electronic media that enables the storage of enormous amounts of textual data. For example, you can store the complete works of an author, or you can you know, even go ahead and store all texts, all works that belong to a particular period. So uh, there are several critics like Paul D. Mand and Edward Scythe and Lee Patterson who have argued in favor of a return to philology movement, a movement that basically focuses or concentrates on recovering the discipline, the rigor that you once associated with a philology. That's all for now. Thank you.